how big of a of a social impact can you have from a sustainability perspective, et cetera? I mean, the swag industry is over sixty billion dollars, and only twenty one percent of that swag is kept, right? So you're talking fifty billion dollars in waste, right? That someone either regifts something, they leave the bag in the hotel to your point where it's like, okay, do I have room for this? Do I even want this? You know, and then I, I would say, I don't even remember ever taking a swag bag home from a, from a conference. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, when you ask that question, I mean, it really depends on what people's commitment is. You are listening to Power Marketing with Kevin Lee. Kevin and his agency Did It have helped thousands of businesses win through superior marketing, as have his books, articles, speaking engagements, and the eMarketing Association Power Marketing Podcasts. Here's Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee with the eMarketing Association. My day job is everyone Did It, a 50 plus person digital first marketing and advertising agency. I've also got a nonprofit in the cause marketing category called Giving Forward, which for that reason, it makes me extra excited to be chatting with uh, Chad Hickey today, who started a company called uh, Gibsley. So I wanted to start by having you share with everybody what the origin story was. That What was that catalyst that had you decide, this has to be fixed and I'm going to fix it? Yeah. Um, you know, my background is being a sales leader. So I've been a CRO or a head of sales at various tech companies. And one of the things that my sales organization would do to connect with our clients would be to go out and volunteer with them or to give back in some sort of way, rather than always just doing, you know, a really nice expensive dinner. Not that those things are bad. They can also be very effective, you know, depending on um, what your customer wants, really. But what I found is that when we would go out and actually volunteer with our clients that the relationships that we would form were much more human mm -hmm. um there was a, a rapport that you had that was very different from a five course dinner where maybe you drink you know too many glasses of wine and forget what you talk about you know halfway through or maybe that's just me um and so i wanted to really uh create a company that could scale that because you know, what I had found is that it's really difficult sometimes to navigate all the moving parts when you're involving a nonprofit, those sort of things, especially when nonprofits don't really understand the ad tech or the MarTech industry, yeah. um, that we could really be that bridge between all the players. And so um, launched the company in 2019. Um, to really enable all of the customers that we now work with today to be able to do that in a very turnkey way where Givesley is that support to them through our various products. Great. Well, I, I uh, recall on, on the website, you talk a lot about pr promotional products and, and that being a, a big catalyst as well. Yes. Um, we've all gone to trade shows and gotten the swag bags. And then uh, particularly if the trade shows out of town, uh, when you get ready to check out of the hotel, you go through this, is it worthy process, right? right. And uh, sometimes stuff doesn't make the cut. And I always felt bad. And apparently that was a sort of part of your, your mission as well is like, you know, why even give away swag that's never going to make it home? Yeah, I, I think that, look, one thing I want to make clear, it's not that Gibsley said swag is bad. You know what I mean? Actually, Gibsley has its own swag. I drink out yeah. of my Gibsley mug all the time. But I think that what you just explained is kind of the point. There are things that people give that people do not want, or there are things that people give that are really um, duplicative of like what people already have. Right. Uh, I was at an agency speaking at their sustainability conference and I asked their head of investment, I said, you know, how many swell water bottles with logos do you have? And the answer was 40. So unless that person's really thirsty, you know, which I don't think is the case, there's a lot of waste and duplication there. Yeah. And so what we have found is that people who use our platform can opt out of those moments um, so that they're like, hey, I don't need the, another swell water bottle. I'd rather that $25 go to Feeding America or the American Cancer Society so that the waste is eliminated, but then they're also able to redirect those funds into something good. And what's really interesting is that 
the companies that are using our platforms and really drawing a line in the sand uh, about three weeks ago, Reddit made an announcement that, you know, they're cutting 50% of their swag and they're replacing it with our uh, platform, which they're branding Karma Cash, you know, is that we find that the companies who take that approach like Reddit are actually also saving money on like shipping and storage, because when they go to these trade shows, one, they're shipping less. Two, they don't have to box that stuff back up, ship it back to their company just to ship it to another trade show. <laughs> um, and so they are finding that we had one client um, that found that in six weeks, they saved more money just on shipping and storage than what the corporate subscription cost. So not only is it, um, I think, a more sustainable, more purpose-led approach, but it's also saving companies uh, money indirectly. And we all know in this economy, you know, a lot of marketers are looking for that. Well, speaking of marketers, right, you and I will both be at the uh, Can Lions uh, event coming up soon. Yes. And uh, that place is awash with marketers and awash with agencies. And so I wanted to get a sense of what your mission is out there. So clearly you'll, you'll be out there to 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 teach and to learn and to schmooze. Um, but, you know, what, what's your mission for the event? Like, what do you, what do you, what's your focus area? Well, listen, I mean, I think Givesley approaches the Can Festival just like anyone else. You know, we're out there to meet with clients, partners, that sort of thing. And, you know, I think that while Can is a very extravagant uh, experience, or it is for, you know, a small town guy like me, um, <laughs> You know, it, it, it is very effective, in my opinion. I think that, you know, I've been more times than I would probably like to admit for different... My, my first time, so I... I oh, it I, is. Well... After 30 years in marketing and advertising, never had an excuse before. Well, here's what I'll say. I hope you like rosé, because you'll be having a lot of it. <laughs> um, but, but I think that, you know, um, what I've always found at, at the Cannes Festival, specifically with the people that are there, is, you know, you tend to have... Uh, a group of people who are more senior. And so I feel like people's defenses are down. I think you're in the south of France, you're in a, a beautiful setting. And so people feel more accessible in, in, in some ways to talk about business. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing I've always found the, the ROI from that event very impactful. But I think that, you know, Gibsley's mission is to go there in a way that is very different from most people. We have what we call our impact hub, which is all about being sustainable at the event. Um, we have an apartment or really two apartments um, at the festival where companies come in and they have their private meetings uh, there. So there are, there's probably four or five different companies that will have their meetings there. But then we also have content. Um, so people will be speaking on our three pillars, which is DEI, sustainability, and then community. And think of community as, you know, mental health, uh, animal welfare, things like that that don't necessarily fit into the first two pillars. And so we have some really great thought leadership there. And I, and I think that really what our goal is, is to show the people, the companies that, that go and you know, maybe they have a yacht and listen, done yachts in the past. We've done the cabanas in the past at, at previous companies, not at Gibsley. Um, but it is to show companies that, hey, you can come to this festival. You can do it in a cost effective way. You can do it in a sustainable way where you are cutting down on a lot of your waste. Because in our space, we don't serve meat products. We don't allow printed materials down to the fonts that we use and our branding. Um, the fonts actually donate back to cancer research. Um, our digital signage is black with really pale yellow because that uses less energy digitally. So, so things are subtle, but they're very intentional, you know, by the way that we show up there. And our goal is to really show companies, hey, you can come here and have this experience, but you can do it in a way that is less impactful in a negative way on the environment. Like it, it doesn't always have to be um, a room full of celebrities or, you know, really extravagant shows and things like that. I realize that some of that is maybe necessary, but if people cut back 20, 30% and kind of think about things in a different lens, it can make a huge impact, you know, to some of these communities in need. Yeah, it sounds like Can will, to some extent, be a, a case study for other conferences and events. So you'll be able to point to that as 
sort of here's how we did it at Cannes and you can do it at the McCormick Center or you can do it in the New York Javits Center or whatever uh, as industry specific conferences and, and events continue to roll out across the US. Yeah, and, and listen, this is our second time going to Cannes. So last year when we went to Cannes, it was our first time um, and we had our space sold out, um, but it took us probably until around March to, to have that done. But then as more people came into the space just for various meetings or um, you know, Campaign US does a lot of their podcasting from there. So there were some really influential people that were a part of that content. Um, I think that people saw the space and they were like, hey, yeah, we can show up in this like beautiful space, but do it in a little bit more of a thoughtful way that doesn't impact climate change. And what, why, the reason why I tell that is because this year we had the space sold out by December because I think everyone kind of saw it. They experienced it, which, you know, we, we understand that, you know, sometimes people need to see, see it, feel it, touch it, sure. make sure yeah. that it's going to give them the same result. But we saw much greater uh, you know, interest and traction based on what people saw in 2022. So assuming you, your vision, you you hit the home run, right? Where you start to do this across different industries at lots of different trade shows from CES all the way down where people start, you know, ad adopting the, the platform from a, a switching out of, of some percentage of their swag or sort of being more selective and then being more selective of how they sort of execute against the events. How big of a, of a social impact can you have from a sustainability perspective, et cetera? I mean, the swag industry is over $60 billion and only 21% of that swag is kept, right? So you're talking $50 billion in waste, right? That someone either re-gifts something, they leave the bag in the hotel to your point where it's like, okay, do I have room for this? Do I even want this? You know, and then I, I would say I don't even remember ever taking a swag bag home from a from a conference. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, when you ask that question, I mean, it really depends on what people's commitment is. I mean, if yeah. you what I love about what Reddit has done is I really feel like they're leading, you know, when it comes to the companies that we've experienced, because they're saying, hey, we are cutting 50 percent of this. We are seeing you know, that customers don't respond as much and that they want to feel like they can make an impact, but they're busy and they're day to day. Like we we get that right. Like we all get busy. We can't do as much as we want to. And so I think that what Gibsley really tries to do is to meet people where they are, is to to create these impactful moments in their current behavior so that people feel more satisfied. But the marketers and the, the companies are getting still the same results of knowing the customers that are interested in this and that they want to move through the marketing funnel quicker to, you know, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, really drive ROI for the business. If they're not doing that, um, you know, our solution isn't going to be impactful for them. So we, we kind of walk that balance of the impact, but also moving people down that marketing funnel quicker. Yeah, that, that's great. So from the perspective of obviously that the brand or the marketer is, is the one who's subscribing to your platform, and then it's their prospects and customers who engage and decide to what level they're going to use the platform. Do you suggest that the marketer curate a, a, a group of nonprofits and then give choice to their customers or their prospects as to sort of where that where that money you know gets deployed that would have been a a useless water bottle. Yeah, they they definitely curate it. So it's typically up to the the partner company that is partnering with us and creating that offer. We call it a donation offer, but um, that donation offer is typically uh, curated by that company so that they're aligning with their values or they're aligning at a moment in a month, right? Like with June, you know, we may have some partners that select, you know, nonprofits, even though they're at CAN, you know, nonprofits that support the LGBTQ plus uh, community just because, you know, it's it's Pride Month. So uh, it really depends case by case. But yes, it is the person who has bought the corporate subscription to the Gibsley platform that is curating the, the nonprofits. So one thing uh, I noticed uh, back when I was running WeCare, which generated 8 million, 8.3 million for nonprofits through cause marketing powered shopping. And now with giving forward is that we, we find that the sort of consumer or the person whose behavior has to change, they tend to have some pretty strong opinions, particularly at the category level as to which nonprofits they like most. It's not that they're anti one nonprofit, but when given a choice, 
they feel a much greater emotional pull to a category of nonprofit. Sometimes they're more or less indifferent within the category, as long as it's sort of a strong brand within that category. But they do definitely have have an opinion. Have, have your your customers, the brands and marketers, sort of toyed with that idea of sort of I want to have an animal cause and I want to have a children's cause and I want to have a sustainability cause and sort of providing a like a a, a modicum of choice without going too crazy because too much choice is paralyzing <laughs> to to, the, to an individual. You hit the nail on the head with that. So so in the product, typically people can offer up to a max of three uh, charities, right? right? And the reason why we do that, as I say. People support causes, they don't always support a nonprofit. So the example I always give, if somebody said, hey, Chad, do you support women's rights? I'd be like, absolutely all day long. You know what I mean? Um, if they said, well, okay, what nonprofit in Oklahoma, I'm just making something up here, you know, in Oklahoma, do you know that's local that supports that? I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't necessarily know right. uh, how to answer that question, nor would the general public know how yeah. to answer that question. And so the reason why we max it at three is because we do feel and we have seen that people get overwhelmed by making the wrong decision. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. <laughs> um, and so the the more concise you can keep it and to your point, the more broad, because I may care about one thing, you know, really strongly, but there may be another thing that doesn't really speak to me. It's not that I don't believe that mission needs help, but just for me personally, like may not be a hot button for me. Yeah. Right. And so um, with those three, we try to encourage a variety. Um, and we also try to give that consumer a little bit of information about each of those nonprofits so that they don't get overwhelmed by five or 10 options um, so that they have a hard time choosing. So um, one, one thing I'd love to get into a little bit more is obviously there's the direct, you know, replacement of those marketing dollars, which would have been an item or, or and now are becoming a donation, right? And then there's the the sort of saved uh, social impact from, from a waste reduction perspective. And both of those are really important KPIs. So are you finding that one of those sort of is more exciting to your marketing clients that they're sort of more excited about the dollar figure or they're more excited about the fact that we saved, you know, X amount of waste? Um, I, I think they care about both. You know, I think that obviously sustainability has been a very big hot button in the last year and a uh, year, year and a half for our clients because they're primarily in marketing and advertising. Right. And there's been a lot of focus on the digital supply chain. So the delivery of ads and how there's so much energy used there. And it is a very, very important thing that that be solved. However, it's not the only thing that makes you a sustainable company, you know, and so um, you know, there was a there was a recent um, study or article around marketers perceptions of sustainable products when it comes to marketing. And there's this perception that it's way more expensive. And there's probably some products that are, but ours is not, you know, like we say, hey, you don't have to go find new budget. You already have it. You're and you're still going to get the same business result. It's just thinking about how you get that business business result. Um, a little bit different. And so I think that we don't see um, people focus on one or the other. I think that people are starting to acknowledge that they have to broadly think about how they um, impact climate change. And I think that they are realizing that there is a ton of intersectionality with the way that climate change impacts, um, you know, uh, communities of color, um, people's mental health, right? Like, Last week in New York, I had a ton of friends that literally could not see outside their, their window uh, because of the smoke from the, the Canadian fires. And so um, that wears on people's mental health. And so it isn't, oh, I have to choose this or I have to choose that. Um, they all work together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So back when I had We Care, which was a for-profit in the cause marketing space, I initially thought that nonprofits would be a channel partner, right? But what I what I realized, and maybe I just didn't have the right formula, was that the nonprofits were so busy trying to keep the lights on and try, trying to accomplish their mission that they that they weren't necessarily they didn't have the bandwidth, to be honest. Yeah, uh, to, to be a partner. And I don't know whether you've 
been able to get because a lot of them have do ha, do have really good corporate partnerships in place, or you know, they're members of their board or members of the board or CEOs at these companies that may be spending, you know, five hundred thousand on 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 marketing at trade shows, right? And so it's logical that you could use them as an entree into the companies, but I never was able to find the perfect formula from a sort of channel perspective to get the nonprofits excited. Uh, I'm hoping you did because it seems like it would be a great channel partnership for you. How are you approaching the nonprofits in the ecosystem? Do they just come along for the ride or are they sort of an important sort of co co marketer for you or co partner for you? Um, you know, I think that the so the first thing is we don't charge nonprofits anything. Right. Um, we are only going to raise money for them. Right. right. Um, and so that's first and foremost our, our mission. The, the other thing, though, is that, you know, these are budgets that nonprofits don't ever see. You know, one of the other big pieces of, of uh, or a catalyst to why we built a platform is as we looked at, you know, the ecosystem and the platforms that were out there to engage at a corporate level, um, some sort of values, nonprofit donations, they were all built for HR and CSR groups. Mm -hmm. And we don't build tools for those groups. I know that may sound right. very strange, um, <laughs> but we don't. Like what I say to people all the time, if purpose drives profit, why are the tools out there only for HR and CSR? And I say this respectfully, if there's any HR or CSR people watching, <laughs> love those groups. But when you think about people who are inherently trained to tie spend to ROI, that is marketing and sales. Like that is their job. They live and breathe that because that is how they get budgets for the next year or the following year is that they're showing how their marketing efforts are driving more business. Our tools are built to do that, right? Mm -hmm. It is meant to say, hey, company, you know, you don't have to do this wasteful thing. You can replace it with something that is more purpose led through the Givesley platform. And guess what? Your customer is going to do what you want them to do in the same way. So uh, that's really the approach that we take. Right, right. So uh, one other thing that, that, and maybe this is in your platform, but it wasn't entirely clear uh, as I was sort of learning about it. Um, can the donation amount go go higher if the prospects and customers engage more deeply? In other words, so obviously replacing the water bottle, that's 20 bucks. But if I sit through a demo at the trade show, can it be 30? And if I actually, you know, uh, answer a quiz and get the questions right about the product, the demo that I just saw, do I actually get another five on top of that, right? Because I would love to imagine that number ratcheting up from whatever the baseline is to an even bigger number by really engaging the prospect in a deeper conversation. Absolutely. So our partners don't just use our platform to replace swag. We will see people use it to set up business meetings. We will see people use it to get an answer to a survey. If someone um, signs up for a webinar, we'll see people use right. it that way. We see people use it to replace their holiday gifting, to give their customers an option if they wanna opt out of a bottle of wine or whatever. So there's a lot of different touch points that people can use to get a business, business result. On top of that, we have a whole advertising side of our platform that to your question on engagement, when people engage with an ad, it triggers a donation for a brand. And so the best way to think about it is someone's watching a pre-roll video um, and they can skip that video at five seconds rather than watching the full 15 seconds. We have a technology that will deliver a message to that consumer to say, hey, engage with this commercial, you know, for the full 15 seconds, and it will trigger a donation to Feeding America. And so what happens is the performance of the campaign increases, the, the, the brand is able to showcase their value. So it's like a win-win, you know, 90% of consumers shop now based on values. And so, you know, these brands that approach that in a cause marketing budget, like, okay, here's my five to 10% cause marketing budget. And then my other 90% is going to my products or whatever. That to me is a very um, 
archaic way of thinking that really needs to change. And so the ad product that we have in our platform uh, definitely increases that engagement of the ad campaigns and helps people break through the digital noise while also showcasing the brand's value. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use it to get better marketing outcomes. Right. <clears throat> sure. Um, uh, is there any uh, fun gamification in the system? Because like people love things like leaderboards and, you know, to, to bragging rights and stuff like that. Uh, not just from a virtue signaling perspective, but like it's just sort of fun if you can if you can sort of gamify things a little bit. Yeah. So we have internal dashboards that help companies track their overall uh, impact that they're making, whether they're using at an event, whether they're doing it to set up meetings, whether they have their ad product like that aggregates in that way to say, look at all the impact that you've made so that at the end of the year, those marketers can take that data to their CSR teams or to their HR teams, whoever tells that holistic story within right. the corporation and add that impact into those reports, right? And so on the gamification front, the reason why I'm smiling a little bit when you said that is because we do have a partner next week that is launching uh, a thermometer at their booth to say, here are these three nonprofits that that we are supporting and okay, this, and I'm just making this up, you know, the Trevor project has 67% of the selections where this nonprofit may have 20%, you know what I mean? And so to your point, that gamification, it just gives people insight. It also gives that company insight. Like, yeah, sure. what do my customers care about? So that then next time I can tailor that a little bit better to even get more response, so. Yeah, yeah, we we found that uh, sort of the democratization of the giving uh, from the con consumer being able to vote with their, you know, whether the click or whatever when when they're going to choose, end up being extremely powerful, right? But yeah. back in the We Care days and under Giving Forward with our cause marketing powered events and other platforms that we've deployed, um, that 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 um, also allows the nonprofit to potentially get more involved as well because. You know, if 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 they now have the opportunity to influence the outcome, it sort of gets them more excited, right? Because they can shift shift things towards them. So, uh, you know, I'd love to hear sort of what 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 has you excited beyond ten? Like, what has you excited for the next year? Right? You guys, to the extent that you can share it, like you guys rolling interesting stuff out. Yeah, I'll take it more at a macro level. I think that we are starting to see brands really well two things we're starting to see companies think more broadly in their sustainability approach so that is really exciting because you know we obviously have a, a platform that broadens that i think on the ad side we are seeing brands kind of start to think beyond the cause marketing budgets that they're saying wait a minute i can use this budget to actually drive better performance of my products and tell that story in a more holistic way like i say all the time patagonia warby parker you know bombas they don't talk about their values in like five percent of their ads right it's in their dna people yeah. know when they see those brands what they do all the time right mm -hmm. and so i think that what excites me and i know this may sound weird is all of the uh, recent backlash, specifically with supporting the, the queer community, um, with some of the brands that you've seen in the trades. You know, while I think brands' initial reaction is to be afraid of making the wrong move, I think it justifies, I think it's the complete opposite. I think it justifies what we are building and how important these things are to a customer. And I think that brands have to get real comfortable that to your earlier comment, you're not going to make everybody happy. And so what do you stand for? Right. And when you know what you stand for and you know your customer, you should be fine. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're, you may lose five, 10 percent of your consumer base, but guess what? You may gain 20 to 25% of a base that didn't know that you support them in some sort of way. So I think it's been, um, initially we've seen some hesitancy. I can just tell in general, you know, if you look at people changing their logos to rainbows, which I've never loved, I think it's complete virtue signaling. Um, it, you know, it's like actually do something to support the trans yeah. 
community or the queer, like get out there and do something, yeah. you know, put it into action. That is what people in that group need. You know what I mean? Not yeah. your logo. Um, but I think that it is showing these brands if they're really paying attention that, hey, this is how consumers shop. And if you're doing something just to do it and you, you haven't really thought it through or you haven't backed up your actions, yeah, it's going to backfire. And guess what? It should backfire. You should be called out. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the key learning for a lot of folks, if they looked at what happened over the last year or, or thereabouts or a little bit less than a year is, is if it's not authentic you know, it doesn't pass the smell test, the sniff test, right? You're like, this just looks like somebody needed a checkbox and they decided to do this and they thought this was the best way to add a checkbox. So, oh yeah, I took care of that. It's it's done. Yeah. Um, and they don't live it. It's not part of the brand. It's not, you know, and they're, they're not fully supporting and throwing their weight behind something, whatever it is, right? Whether it's sustainability or, or, or you know, and any other of the uh, areas where there's a huge constituency that, that aligns with it, right? So the, obviously the, the, the market is excited about a constituency and like, oh, if only I could get this constituency to prefer my brand, wouldn't that be great? I could add 40 million in sales. Well, right. yeah, it's it's not as easy as just adding a checkbox or a Band-Aid on top of something or adding rainbows to logos, right? That's right. That's right. It really needs to be authentic or it's not going to pass the, the, the sniff test. Yeah, it's, it's very simple. You know your values, you can back up your values, you should be fine. Right, right. Cool. Well, I look forward to uh, catching up in Can and, uh, and and watching your continued growth. And uh, I'll, I'll stop by and check out the thermometer and see if I can uh, move, move the to one yeah. direction or the other. <laughs> Help us drive some donations. That would be amazing. Absolutely. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Gibbsley. Likewise. Uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin Lee's Power Marketing is available on all your favorite podcast networks. Kevin loves helping businesses excel at marketing. Having marketing challenges? Just like Santa in the Miracle on 34th Street. If Kevin can't help you, he'll know someone who can. Find him on LinkedIn, subscribe, or follow.